Hey folks, it's Matt Zachary and welcome to Vax On, a brand new weekly segment of my podcast Out of Patience right here on the Offscript Media Network. Hey, I'm Alora Nanos. I'm a lawyer, a journalist, a mom of a teenage narcoleptic and a professional big mouth. Lou and I go back 30 years as best friends and we're here to have fun and bring you a layperson's guide to what the hell just happened this week in healthcare as America gets its vax on and shows COVID the door. Matt gets me. He knows I'm tired, annoyed, and sometimes pushed to the brink by the intense chaos of our lives right now. We're here together to learn, complain, and include you in the conversation. So join us on Twitter at VaxOnPod and share your stories and grievances using the hashtag VaxOn. Conspiracy theorists and haters shall be neutralized on site. All right, Matt, let's get at it. Hi, Allura. Hey, Matt. Why are we here? You know, just to complain a little and, uh, you know, talk to each other about all the uh, fuckery that's happening. Oh, uh, you started what I made, I made it five seconds. Are we going to try to keep the F-bombs to a minimum? I say no. No, no. All right. I mean, we can try. Why, why try something that I know I'll be terrible at? Well, the thing is, why a segment about a patient? I already have a podcast. I think- The, the your podcast I, doesn't have me, though. Well, that's the thing. Like, we're, it's, it's, you're, you're an added benefit at this point now, because it's a segment about a patient called Vaxon, and you're like, are you like Samantha B? What do you want to be? Who, who's your character in the vertical oh. narrative of the, of the Matt Daly show? Oh, uh, that that that's a very loaded question. Can I be a, can I be a lot of a little people? <laughs> you want to be a little uh, a little, little Lewis Black? Yeah, I, I want to be like you know Rachel Ray's recipes without the yelling, <laughs> and and um, Samantha B without the blazers. <laughs> Jason Jones, I think he comes to the package. Yeah, like, I want to be all of it. I'm 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 everything. Well, I think what this comes down to is uh, obviously. Pandemic, COVID, crap. We've done a few shows on out of patience about this ranting as parents and Gen Xers with teens and kids and school and all that insanity going on. And I feel like, you know, I had COVID. I got my first vaccine shot. You got your first vaccine shot. And we're the, vaccine twins, we're actually. We're vaccine twins. And and there's so much such a degree of, of disinformation or misinformation or a lack of knowing where information is from a average Joe Jane perspective that I got so much feedback and so much positive commentary that the audience that is part of this show now, why don't I do a like a last week tonight for fuckery and healthcare from the patient perspective, from the aggrieved caregiver perspective and recap the week of like, how have you been? And here's what the CDC is saying and facts and science matter. And what else is going on? Yeah. And, you know, I think, Matt, one of the things that really occurred to me is that because we're all uh, just waiting so much, so, you know, I can't wait for this whole period of time to be over. It's easy to lose sight of the fact that we are all in a really sort of unique and special time right now. And while we all hope to get back to normal or whatever that will look like when we get there, you know, we're in this right now and we have to deal with it. And that's going to require bonding with each other, keeping up on the news and talking through it all because it's a it's a rough time. Yeah, I want to I want to acknowledge all my listeners over the last year. This is like starting season two ish of Out of Patience. And I want to thank you for sticking with us and chiming in every week and leaving your feedback. But I also want to get you excited that we're kind of adapting out of patience into this different type of channel. So the Vaxon segment, this is our, I guess our pilot, <laughs> but the Vaxon segment will be every Thursday. So you'll hear my normal one-to-one -one awesome, I, I think they're awesome, <laughs> interviews with awesome. thought leaders and awesome people. But every Thursday, we're going to drop a weekly Vaxon episode, Ilura and I. I'm going to be here every week. Yes. So get used to me. Well, you might be here. I'm here. Or you might be there. Virtual remote from your bunker. As we've learned during COVID, it doesn't matter. No. Either one is here. It Virtual is here and yeah. here is here. So like I said, we're we're here to just kind of have have some fun and channel our, our grievances and you know bring you this like layperson, what the hell's really going on? And something as simple as uh, I was on a call today and I uh, with an OBGYN friend and I said, Can pregnant women get the vaccine? I don't know that. 
and I'm sure it's out there somewhere. But you know what? Yes, they can. But ask your doctor. And we want to always, you're a lawyer, say, yes. ask your doctor. Definitely always ask your doctor. And if you don't like what your doctor has to say, find another doctor. And if you think your doctor told you the wrong thing, then ask a lawyer. Just not Trump's doctor. No, not that. He died, though. Oh, he did? Oh, yeah, Trump's doctor of died. Of COVID? Uh, I don't think it was of COVID. Okay. You know, it was that well, wacky doctor. Sad. It was that wacky doctor. Yes. Right? And he's still does. sad. Of course. You no, know, it's totally sad. Yeah. But it, I mean, you can't ask him any questions. Right. And I also want to do a shout out to the CDC. I work very closely with the leadership at the CDC to get facts and data. And a shout out to Dr. Lisa Richardson, who I did interview on this show two weeks ago. You scroll back in the feed. Phenomenal interview. She is the, I think she is the division chief of cancer control and prevention at the CDC. You know, just that. Just that. Super executive, top of the line, authority and everything. And we're channeling the CDC. We're also going to be channeling Med Twitter, hashtag Med Twitter, uh, because that is like the de facto place where doctors and providers convene on Twitter to share information back and forth with each other in a public setting. And what better places to get data facts and real things to distill and talk to you, the listener, about? That's fantastic. And I actually didn't know that about med Twitter. Um, I'm so wrapped up in law Twitter. But I mean, law Twitter is usually it's not a hashtag. It's like, you know, there's the same, uh, you know, 30 people on Twitter who are law professors and legal experts who, it, you know, everyone goes to those people to see what they're going to say about whatever the topic is. And it's really helpful because even if you don't agree with them, you learn just from seeing what they have to say. And I think that you know, right now, when when everyone in the world is looking for a medical advice, we need to do that. We need to look at credible sources and make sure that we're going to the right place, which can be overwhelming in and of itself to figure out where the hell that is. Right. So starting next Thursday, dropping it, I think drops the, the platform does like one in the morning for some reason. Maybe Japan wants to hear this first. I have no idea. But starting because well, we're th <laughs> Thursday morning, we're the super fantastic. Yes. Show? In yeah. your in your podcast feed, wherever you get your podcasts. Uh, Vax on. And we're going to have a formula. We're going to talk about what's happened with us during the week. Like my wife's school opened and closed in three days. And it, as if we weren't already in like chaos theory at home with the kids and everything. The opening just, and closing of schools uh, has got to be of, of everything that has happened. The opening and closing of schools with no notice has got to be, I think, the most frustrating part of the entire it's pandemic. It's incomprehensible. It, it's because explaining it to children is impossible. Right. Because, you know, anyone who has raised small children knows that the key to doing well is always preparing your child. If your kid is going to the doctor to get a, a shot, you prepare them for, you know, two hours in advance so they don't freak out when they get there. If they're starting a new school, you know, you do a dry run beforehand. This pandemic, because things keep changing every day, it makes it impossible to do that. So parenting just becomes a mess because if there's anything kids can't handle, it's things done ad hoc with no notice. Right. So I think our first segment will be a uh, parenting drinking game or something oh, like somebody that. needs to do that, man. Because that, I mean, I have a lot of listeners that have small kids in the Gen X space and where we are you and you are us and what are we doing? But we also want to in, channel the CDC, channel med Twitter, and obviously look at the news and say, how the fuck is this a thing? Like, this is so stupid. And just for the sake of this particular show, let's talk about that poor doctor that tried to do the right thing that got sued and, and shamed, right? He yeah. had leftover vaccines. Matt, this was the craziest story. So it, it came out in December. And there's a Texas doctor. His name is Hassan Gokal. And he is... Um, He's a doctor in Texas who was hired by the Texas Department of Health or by his county Department of Health to supervise a COVID vaccine site back in December. So it, it was the very first vaccine, what do they call it? Like vaccine day, like the first time <laughs> the they vaccine had Vaccine day. <laughs> it was the first time they did it. So, and it was only, and it, because it was the first time, only like 200 people came to it. It was all for healthcare workers. No big deal. But because it was new, they didn't have like lines of people waiting outside. So they they got their uh, vaccine dosages in. And as the day started coming to a close, they found that they had 10 extra doses of vaccine with no one to use them. They'd already been opened. They had to get used before they expired. They would only be, be usable for a few hours. So this doctor had to figure out, well, what should he do? Should he just throw them away? You know, we don't know. So he, he called his bosses, he called people, he called everyone around to see if there was anyone to use it. There was no one available to use the vaccine. So he put out a call to his friends and acquaintances, and he found nine people 
to that needed the vaccine. They were mostly people who were older, people with health conditions, caregivers. So he drove to their houses or they drove to his house and, and he vaccinated all these people. Well, Seems so nice. So nice. That's Hippocrates. That's helping people. Exactly. Like, it seems like it makes perfect sense. Like, he checked around. He was going to throw the vaccine in the trash. So he used it for people who needed it. One vaccine left. It was going to expire in 15 minutes. He gives it to his wife, who, by the way, suffered from an underlying pulmonary condition. Next day, he goes to work. He tells his bosses what he did. He logs it in the paperwork. Everything is totally on the up and up until the guy gets fired and criminally prosecuted for theft, for stealing what they said was $135 worth of the vaccine. What? It's like some fuckery, yeah. right? I think that is the very definition of fuckery. I mean, and, and here's the thing. Of course, we need to have laws and rules about who uses vaccines. And, you know, we don't want doctors calling their friends and not vaccinating people who really need the vaccine. You know, of course, we don't want that, right? But there's rules in place for this. The fact that this man was criminally prosecuted is so bizarre to me. It's not like he was he was prosecuted because he broke some kind of a medical law. He was prosecuted using the laws they use for shoplifting. OK, it, it was just bizarre. So the case goes to trial and the judge just throws it out. The judge says there's no probable cause. This is totally ridiculous. So it was like, yay, our justice system at work. It, I mean, it, you know, although his life was, you know, kind of ruined and he, he did lose his job. That's just... It's terrible. So it, what is this like a legal precedent? Was this a vindictive act of human resources? Like wherein lies the rub? I frankly don't understand what happened because by all accounts, the prosecutors didn't even call him to ask what his side of the story was. Wait, wait. So I'm not a lawyer. Are they supposed to do that? I mean, good investigation would mean that, you know, he do not have the legal right to be contacted, but good investigation would mandate that you would find out what happened in a situation like that. You would at least get the defendant's side of the story before bringing criminal charges. And they didn't really do that. And by the way, it doesn't seem like anywhere in this, it came up that the guy's boss told him it was okay to do exactly what he did with those vaccines. So morally, he did the right thing. It certainly sounds like it. Legally, it it sounds like he did nothing illegal. And yet they're saying he stole virus I mean, they things did, that should have been thrown away. Yeah. I mean, that's what prosecutors said. And like I said, thankfully, the machine of justice worked in his favor because the case got dismissed. Yeah. You know, and, and maybe he'll file a lawsuit against prosecutors for malicious prosecution or maybe he'll file an employment lawsuit. But, you know, his side of the story now that it's being reported is really upsetting. He was disgraced. His family and friends wanted to know what the hell was going on because, you know, the narrative was that he used needed vaccines to give them to just the people he cared about and not the people who really needed them, which it really doesn't sound like that's what happened at all. But it just the whole thing seems really upsetting. And uh, look, I, I know I'd hate to be in charge of making the rules about how vaccines are distributed. And, you know, I, I would. That's, that's a tough, all of the show. Yeah. I mean, it's a complicated mess. I, I realize that. Um, but it sounds like in this case, uh, there was just fuckery afoot. So let's end on a positive note. Yes. Can we do that, <laughs> For please? Our pilot. It looks like we could be looking down the barrel of the single vaccine dose that actually is covering all potential mutant versions of coronavirus. So a single shot that can adapt and be, I think, that like the, I don't know, iOS 10.1 to iOS 10.2 version of the dosage where you will need maybe a booster at some point, but... One vaccine to rule them all. And are they saying, does that mean like one vaccine ever or just like one vaccine every year? Well, I'm looking at the New York Times and they're saying scientists are working on a shot that could protect against COVID-19, its variants, certain seasonal colds and the next coronavirus pandemic. Wait, hang on. Did I hear that right? Did we all of a sudden cure the common cold now also? It's also going to wash your dishes, do your laundry. <laughs> Is it going to do my kids' algebra homework? Tell your kids homework? to dress in the morning, brush your teeth, yes. That's, so like the pandemic just fixed everything. Is Rosie the robot vaccine, yes. I mean, it sounds good. Speaking of those robots, wasn't there supposed to be a robot clean in my house by now? I mean, I just go back to Rocky IV. Rocky IV had the yes, robot. Rocky yeah. IV had the robot. Like, I feel fucked on the robot situation. <laughs> Nobody gave me my robot. Yeah. I'm annoyed by it. I mean, do you, uh, can we just discuss something of paramount importance? How right. many times a day do you unload your dishwasher? You're a man, so probably none. My wife and I share the burden. Do you, you share that? I think we have a problem emptying it more than we have filling it. 
We, I it, literally, it says there were clean stuff inside it. I literally load and unload my dishwasher probably four times a day now. Wait, this is still a robot conversation. Well, I want the robot because that's a perfect <laughs> robot job. But like before the pandemic, I maybe loaded and unloaded the dishwasher once every other day. Now it's four times every day. I don't understand. I don't understand how that's the situation. This conversation went way left. I, I just, listen, let's not make the dishwashers political. All right. <laughs> well, I just not that left. I just don't understand. Maybe the kitchen's on the left. I don't I know. I don't understand why there's so well, many we, dishwashers. Well, we hope, we hope on that note, <laughs> you've enjoyed what hopefully will be in store for you next week with the Vaxon series with my best friend, Elora Nanos. Yes. Looking forward to hearing what's going on in your dishwashers. Yeah. Tell us about your dishwashers, folks. <laughs> How has the pandemic affected palm olive? <laughs> Not a sponsor. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Hope, hope to hear about your dishwasher soon. Yes. And again, join us on Twitter at VaxOnPod to share your grievances. If there's fucker in your life, we want to hear about it. We're here to dissect. Something? <laughs> All right. Vax on, Vax off. See you next time. That's all for today, folks. If you like today's show, the conversation continues on Twitter at VaxonPod. That's V-A-X-O-N pod. Be sure to subscribe, leave a review, and tell all your friends to listen. Vaxon is a product of Offscript Media. Our executive producers are Matthew Zachary and Alora Nanos. Our senior producers are Brianna Seeley and Andrew McDowell. Darren Tun is our production intern. It is mixed and edited by Brianna Seeley. Our theme music is by Chair Model. For advertising and media inquiries, email media at offscript.com. Hit us up at contact at offscript.com to share comments, feedback, and make recommendations. For more information, visit offscript.com. Mm-hmm.